Welcome back to the vlog. Welcome here to Denunget. This is Brad's first time taking off out of here. It is. It starts with a 15% slope, and then eventually it's kind of shaped like a banana, and eventually is like around a three to four percent uphill going off. So we're empty today. Oh, you're probably not going to see it, but if we were full up, then we would kind of just follow along that train on the way out of here. But we're going to get started. 32 minute flight back to Garoka. Look out! All right, let's go ahead and get lined up as soon as possible just because our fuel is just draining out to our left tank as quickly as it can. Okay. So it kind of beta, it just will swing around without it actually wanting to pull you any further. Okay. Especially because we're just on a downhill, it will just kind of like, it will almost like help the airplane like swing around a little bit. Okay. Wanna grab your emergency brake for a second? Oh, we're empty today. And so there's really not gonna be much difference for anything. It looks like we might have even maybe potentially a one knot headwind takeoff, maybe. So like any other takeoff, we're just gonna do the same thing. If we were full, it'd be a little bit different procedure and we'll go over that some other time. But for today, it's just gonna be regular takeoff. Sure. And because we're light enough, you're not, you're not really gonna feel it, but just, we haven't done too much slopes takeoff like this, at least this much of a slope, because even where we're gonna be getting our wheels off, it's still probably at least a 10% slope. So you're just gonna rotate just like you would on any other Garoka anything, and then just hold it there like you would any other. It's not gonna feel like you're really climbing because the ground's, because you, you're going from like this to here, and you're still kind of like going down, and yeah. eventually you'll get the speed and start climbing up, but at first it'll feel like, oh, we're not really climbing. You are, but it's not going to feel like it, so don't just continue to pull up even further than you normally would. Okay. We want to go ahead and climb at 73, or do we want to transition to BY immediately? Um, nope, just climb at 73 okay. until, which is just our VX uh, for the viewers, which is our best angle. And then once you get out here past like the end of the runway and stuff, then you can kind of just climb at your 85 knots. So, that's good. So for, go ahead. I'm going to do this quick call. 5565 five, November Tango Zulu taxi. November Tango Zulu Morigo. November Tango Zulu taxi Denunga Garoka 2 POB. November Tango Zulu no point service confirm remaining OCTA through Garoka. Okay. Affirmative OCTA November Tango Zulu. All stations to Nugget, 12300, November Tango Zulu will be departing to Nugget for Garoka. We'll be on climb at above 10,000. All stations to Nugget. Left. Okay, so this one we're just going to be, once we're brakes release. So we're committed. And we're committed. Right. Like it is a little bit slippery out, so yeah, at that point we're committed because we're not going to be able to stop safely. Okay, sounds good. Okay, we've got ignition, inlet prompt condition. Flaps, fuel, and harnesses are locked. Checklist is complete. And on this, we're just gonna lock our elbow in. Don't try to fight all the bumps. Just kind of just sit there with it about, right. yeah, about right there. We're a little bit off cockeye, just a time bit to the right. We'll be able to straighten back up, so don't just overcorrect it, but. Okay. All right. 1330, rotating 55. Sounds good. Right there. Okay. Air speed's alive. Engine instruments are in the green. Air speed's coming up and okay. rotate. There we go. There's 73. And we've moved the terrain. We're going to nose it down. All right, nicely done. 500. Thank you. Watch your ITT. Morris B5565, November Tango, Zulu departure. November Tango, Zulu, Morris 
November Tango Zulu departed to Nunga time 54. We'll be on track 268 on climb, not above 10,000. Estimating Goroka 26. November Tango Zulu. Another airplane over here. I wonder if that's the one that went over to Tap Tap. Looks like he's about the same altitude as us. Doesn't say. All stations did not get. And the uh, side or gap area, Kodiak November Tango Zulu just departed did not get. Passing 6,400 on climb that above 10,000 for Garoka. All right, I think you could probably start making your turn now because we're already at 6,500. I'll say this is uh, Dinagat and Alpha Tango Zulu. Charlie Alpha departed for 7 Mega. Four Ned's there, wide aside against uh, through 6,300. November Tango Zulu copies. We're just about a beam to Nugget this time on a southwesterly heading. So I was talking to Brad on the way out here. What we're going to do, try to do is go through the dirty water gap. There was quite a few clouds in there on the way out here, which is great for what we're doing in our training. So we're hoping that there's still going to be clouds there. Um, last time I took you guys out here, I tried doing on the return trip through that area, and it was just too plugged up. Wasn't able to actually even get in there. So we'll see how it is today. As you can see, we're... Yeah, there's only another Charlie Alpha on our side. Copy the last step, transmission. No conflict, have a nice day. Yeah, likewise. So, we're completely empty right here. And just kind of thinking about where you turned and things like that. If we had passengers getting out of there, even if it was only 400 to 450 kgs, that would probably take out of there. Just kind of note, okay, this is kind of where I'm getting to these mountains, and we're 100% empty. Yeah. That got above 10,000, right? Yes. Um, we can this right here, though, we'll have to stay below because that is at 10,000. Yeah. So if we could just stay below that on our way. And then, honestly, we could probably drop back down 8,000 because it's going to be clear over top of this valley. Yeah. So there's really no purpose in going all the way up there. Yeah. If we're going to be trying to go through the dirty water gap and start our our descent a little bit earlier than normal. On a comfortability level, maybe at a scale of like one to five going out of there, what would you what would you rate yourself as being as far as like maybe your own situational awareness, like you know, were you aware of your airspeed, were you aware of your your ITT settings, or was it just a little bit kind of overwhelming and things were going quickly? It was pretty overwhelming. Everything was happening really quickly. I, I wasn't super uncomfortable. If I'd have been doing it by myself, I probably would have been, <laughs> for sure. Uh, at the beginning, I wasn't holding firm on the control. You notice that really right away. Then once I locked it in, it started feeling a little bit better. And I felt like I was able to maintain center line fairly well. There wasn't much of a crown, so that wasn't, it wasn't really pulling us one way or the other. Uh, but the end was coming up pretty quick. I could have, could have nosed it off. It wasn't until after 60 knots that I actually raised the, the nose wheel. Yep. Um, I could have gotten off sooner, but where I did lift off was fairly close to the end, and then it was climbing, so it wasn't really feeling comfortable until beyond the runway and we had a nice climb rate, and yeah. the train was going down in front of us. Yeah, so, kind of what I, yeah, I observed the same thing. I know for myself, getting in the habit of kind of locking in your arm on slopes, runways, or on maybe even more rough runways, because I almost like, I'll just say it verbally out loud, I'm gonna lock my elbow in, just because yeah. I found that if I don't tell myself what to do, I have a harder time actually doing it, because I'll get, distracted with other things going on. Uh -huh. And then rather than also kind of what I do too is like I thought well, we're about right here, that's where we want it. But then as we were going, I was like, no, it needs to be a tiny bit more. Like you, you can kind of eventually feel it. So that's why I just pulled back a little bit more just to give you the more of the feeling on where it exactly needs to be. Uh -huh. uh, but some places like Gama where it's like really rough, like you actually like have to like grip the yoke as hard as you can just so that it's not bouncing all really? over the place. Like it's very rough. Yeah. And yeah, I, I would say that's pretty standard until you've done a couple of these runways a few times to like 
especially the first few times, it's kind of like, man, there is a lot going by. And especially, we haven't, I think that was probably your biggest slope one that you've done yet. I think so. So there's just a couple different, I don't know, sensations that you're really not used to when you do slope runways. Because the biggest thing is right when you're taking off, like how much do you pull to get off and then like how much more do you climb? Because it doesn't, the sight picture's off, you know? Yeah. No, no, I thought you did well. Um, and yeah, it'll just come in time for the Tango Zulu, must be check or one, two, three, day two, one, November Tango Zulu. Reading you strength four on descent, amended 8,000. November Tango Zulu. Traffic is out for November Tango, focus 70, fixing. Guru car for Mosby. On departure, we don't have to fly level 270. Mike Charlie Lima, DK, fixing. Guru car for Mosby. Departure, we don't have to fly level Copy traffic by 2, November Tango Zulu. Contact Roka Tower, 15 miles, November Tango Zulu. So, what we can also do is, let me pull up, let me pull up the dirty water here, so it's 9DWG. 9DWG. Okay, there we go. That gives you a better picture of where we're going. Looking out on those ridges way out there, it looks like the clouds have raised up a little bit since the hour ago that we were out here. But we'll still fly down it regardless, just so that you can see it for one more time. That's good. We want to get this at 7,500. We'll just maintain 8,000 until we get a little closer. See what's going on over there. I was asking the guys out there and did not get, somebody had asked me in one of my last videos going out here was, the, was the community, did they actually build the airstrip? Like, did they group up there and then build the airstrip or were they already there and they built the airstrip there? And they were saying they actually moved to that location because that was the only flat area or flat enough area and where they were living. And I guess they built it back in like the 80s, took about six years to build it. And then their government school out there started in the early 90s, so I thought that was interesting. That is interesting. Okay, so yeah, the dirty water will be a good opportunity because there's more clouds over here. Yeah. But man, you can it, see Hellwig just poking through up there. It'd be sure easy to come in over to the left, wouldn't it? Oh yeah, that would be the easiest way, but honestly, the way we came out, like we're already seeing the ridges pretty much, just the types of them, and we were at 9,000 going through there, and we were seeing kind of yellow on the terrain map uh -huh. and a little bit of red underneath one. So it doesn't really like the the clouds have really even risen up that much, really that much. So it does look like there's probably going to be some that we're going to have to go around, which would be great. Yeah. So I'll let you determine if you feel like the need to have to slow down and do more of our procedure for going around clouds nice and truck. terrain. Okay. Or if it's like, eh, there's plenty of room here. We'll just cruise on through and just go down kind of the low route. Hellwig for the viewers is just up by the Bennett Gap, so that's an easy reference point that you can see from way far out, and you know the Bennett Gap is right there. So if you're looking at it and going, man, there's a ton of clouds, or I don't even see it, or there's a lot of rain, then there's a bigger chance, but yeah, I think we'll be able to take our way through today. Okay, so to get in there, let's see, let's throw our, because we're coming in here with a bunch of, um, clouds, it gives us a better depiction on exactly where the valley is going to be going. Okay, so we have this big hill right here, and then it drops off. So, see how there's a higher clouds just right here? Yeah. That's potentially caused by that, maybe. Okay. So, the clouds might drop off between the valley just past that. So, either that, or maybe if we come out here a little bit, we come up here and it's just too much, we come around the corner, uh -huh. it might open up that we see, who knows. So we can get through the dirty water gap at 7,500 feet about. Yeah. Um, so we're really not that much different from where, um, I wouldn't quite yet because because we do have all these clouds. We can, but then it's gonna be, hard. It's gonna be easier to drop 500 feet really quick than to climb back up 500 feet. And you can see better being you higher up. You can see better, much better being higher up. Okay. If you view or a flight center, you want to try the same flight, 
uh, hopefully by now someone has actually built the nugget out there on Microsoft Flight Sim or X-Plane that you guys can actually go from there to here and try the same um, flight out coming through here, the dirty water and stuff. I'll leave some link downs below to my Patreon page where you guys can, I, I'm almost positive I've already posted it by now. I think I posted one already for the same flight a while ago, but yeah, really fun to do it on that because it's actually pretty realistic from what I've seen pictures of. All right, so you can see this big cloud here, and then it looks like it stops right here at the end, and then it like goes around the corner. So my guess is that's what we're seeing here. We're saying we should come around this, this edge over here. It would probably be easier, but we might be able to continue on like here as well. Um, I don't know, we're just seeing this ridge right here, and the, at the altitude that we're at right now, uh, it's gonna be, really close. I mean, most of these are higher than us, so we would only be able to find some little ways to get through. So why don't you go and you figure out what you want to, what you think is going to work the best. And the way I a lot of times work clouds is whatever way is 100% going to work, that's the way you choose. Yeah. Now this is, this is definitely if you're work like easier. If you're like, uh, it's qu it's quicker that way, but I don't know if I can do it that way. Yeah. And you're like, uh, this is going to take maybe an extra 15 seconds kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's like, just do the easier way and yeah. give yourself all that extra room to think. I do think that will, probably would have worked. It looked like there was a little bit of a break, but it would have been tight. If, if it wasn't going to work to get back out, it was going to be kind of tight with the level the clouds were. Exactly. So this works better. And it's not much. You're just giving yourself a little bit extra, so now you can just look straight down in into that valley yeah. right there. Yeah. And we've got all kinds of room to turn out, slow down, change your mind. Okay. I think I can actually see the gap over here already. I see some ridges, but I don't see 100%. Yeah, we can go through it kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. You can just see some better weather over there, potentially. As we've got all kinds of room to turn out, so I'm going to head in a little closer if we can't find our gap. These clouds right here are about our level as well, so we'll just stay at our 8,000. A7 knot crosswind to the left. If it starts to get tight, it'll be nice to know where the winds are coming from. I'm going to hug the left because we've got a lot of room to turn out to the right. Okay. Even with that left crosswind. Just because I can't be too much. I don't really know what I'm doing yet. I'm going to slow down, just give myself a little bit more time. Okay. I think it's going to be fine once we get past this cloud bank right here, but I don't know I keep climbing. Be more comfortable. Okay, so what can we do here? We can go ahead and get the flaps in and start slowing down more. We can get all flaps and the results of the one time, one base. If we can get down to the altitude, looks like there we're starting to see the ridge. Yeah. It looks like you're seeing down into the valley because you're seeing a different color of blue over top of it. Okay, so we're only at 10 degrees of flaps right now. So if you throw your 20 degrees of flaps in and you have your prop forward, then you have your best scenario, like if you were to have to like climb really fast, you're gonna have your best scenario for getting up and out of there where you want to. Oh, okay, so this is, we've got two of them here. There's the road right there. And then you have another lower one over there as well. So this is basically the whole valley that goes all the way out. So now you can go ahead and speed back up if you'd like. So you can get yourself a better picture. So as you, if you take a look here, as you come in here, it kind of splits off and it comes out this valley here and there's one of the gaps and then the higher gap is here, but the lower gap is right over there. And the road kind of goes in between the two of them. Well, there's not quite as many clouds as we were hoping for, but it's all right. And then once you're 100% clear, this is basically going all the way out to the Garoka Valley. So if we look here, you can kind of see it kind of goes all, kind of winds its way as turns out. So we probably won't go through those ones, but we can just continue on all the way out that valley out there. Okay. Start listening in on Garoka Tower. 
Probably won't be able to pick them up until we get around this next corner, though. Now that we're back in cruise, we can pull the prop back. So if you're ever coming up to, to the valleys and stuff that you're not really familiar with, it's always best, even if you're like, oh, I don't think I'm going to need it or something, or like, unless it's like, man, this is 100%. Is just to get everything ready for an emergency climb out of there oh. if you're not prepared for it. And when everything else comes at you, you're going to be like, crap, what's going on? Why is it not climbing? Why am I whatever, you know? Yeah. I'm just automatically getting some flaps in the front forward. Uh, I usually do. Like If it's like a tighter area, unless it's like just a clear boom, everything is just... Awesome. If you're gonna get 10 degrees of flaps, you might as well just get the 20. Yeah, and because what happens? And then you're ready to go. What, what happens when you do the 10 degrees and then you keep slowing down and uh -huh. you're looking outside? Now yeah. you're going 90 knots with just 10 degrees of flaps, and it's just gonna be so much more responsive if you have your 20 degrees, even at 90. Kuroka Tower, November Tango Zulu. November Tango Zulu, Kuroka Tower. Go ahead. Morning again, right in November Tango Zulu, one six miles to the east, seven thousand five hundred. Your circuit time three zero. November Tango Zulu, morning again, Ryan. Runway three five right, you'll be number one landing sequence. Uh, traffic Alpha Hotel Papa, Sesti Caravan, inbound from the west, from Chimbu, not above nine thousand. Gorka estimate three three. Uh, runway 35 right, wind light and variable QNH 1016, track and report right base. 1016, track for right base, 35 right will be number one, no, Tango Zulu. Crooked Tower, November Tango Zulu, joining right base, 35 right. November Tango Zulu, runway 35 right, clear to land. Clear to land, 35 right, no, November Tango Zulu. Water down to 73, and then 63 on final. Tailwind, four knot crosswind from the right. There's 63. Expecting up and down draft. Aiming for the threshold, landing on the right. A little bit fast. Alpha Hotel Papa, 3-5 left, clear to land. 3-5 left, clear to land, Alpha Hotel Papa. Well, thank you for taking the time to watch, and uh, if you enjoyed that takeoff out of Denanga, give this video a thumbs up. Share it with whoever you like, on whatever platform you like. Welcome here to Garoka. Five eighty five, front of the gate.